Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. I'm out here in the bush and I found this nicely fallen tree that's going to work as a really nice place for me to sit as well as a pretty good backstop for the knife that I want to show you. Let's see if I can get everything locked into place here. Forgive me for this not being centered but the uh, the tripod just isn't wanting to cooperate with me this afternoon so we're going to have to go with what we have and I think this looks just fine, right? So. Uh, we're out here to take a look at a knife today. This was sent to me by Steel Will for review and I've got to say thank you so much for doing that. Uh, the Steel Will Romer series is a series I've been interested in for some time and so when I was talking to Steel Will about possibly doing some review stuff I was pretty stoked when they were willing to send me one out. Now I should point out here at this point that this is a particular version. So when I say Steel Will Romer there are actually a whole bunch of variants of this knife. So this is the Romer 305. Actually, I should give you a good chance to take a look at that sheath first before I pull it out. So this is the 305. Uh, there's a 300, there's a 345. I think there's like a 315, a 375. There are a number of different models of this knife anyway. So just be aware of that when you go looking for this. I will put a link in the description box down below to Amazon as well as White Mountain Knives. I'm not sure if White Mountain Knives will have them in stock or not, but uh, Amazon certainly will. So uh, check out those links down below. Uh, just know that it's the 305 that I'm sharing with you here. You may want to look at the other models. There's a larger one that's more of a heavy chopper. There's some smaller ones. There's some more designed for, you know, skinning, that kind of application. So uh, check out the various models that Steel Wheel has out there. I think there are like three new models for this year, which is 2019 for those of you who uh, are just who are catching this a year from now or a couple years from now and maybe by the time you're watching this there are even more models out there I don't know uh, so first thing let me say why I picked this particular model the 305 is because this really suits the way I like to use a knife in the bush I don't like a big chopper um, I like to lean to something a little bit smaller and lighter and do primarily cutting tasks with my tasks with my knife if I'm going to be chopping or processing wood on a larger scale then I'll use a saw or a hatchet uh, so I don't you know I don't look for a knife that can do those jobs Okay, so let me give you the specs here while we're kind of working our way through the introduction. Then we'll talk about performance and feel in hand and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this guy is going to be 10 and 3 quarter inches overall, 5 and a half inches on the blade, 5 and a quarter on the handle, about 4 inches of grip area. That's from here to here. So uh, even a pretty big hand, this is going to accommodate well. And uh, you can see in lots of different grips. One thing that can happen sometimes is if you don't have enough room back here, in a reverse grip, like a draw cut type of grip, you don't get enough room to fit your hand, but this has lots and lots of real estate. So I definitely appreciate that. Now, if you add the sheath, which most people are obviously going to do, I guess, I suppose everyone's going to have to do. Now the size is gonna go up, it's 11 and a half inches overall, and this guy's gonna weigh in at 11 ounces, okay? So that's sheath and knife together. Um, <laughs> this is one of my pet peeves in life. If you're looking at fixed blades online, for some reason they always list the weight of the knife excluding the sheath. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're carrying this, you're using the sheath, there's no other option. So anyway, uh, that's just a bit of an aside, but the the weight with the sheath is 11 ounces. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the blade. Since we're kind of, you know, in the specs segment of the video, I'll just point out that this stock is going to be 153 thousandths, and it's 30 thousandths behind the edge with this fairly high flat grind. Uh, and that's a nice balance. As far as I'm concerned, um, a knife is a cutting tool. Yeah, my boot's going to be a little bit in frame there. You'll have to deal with it. Um, a knife is a cutting tool, and I want it ground to cut primarily. You know, yeah, you could make this 50 thousandths or 60 thousandths behind the edge, and it would be a lot tougher, but good luck cutting anything. So 30, 30 thousandths to me strikes a pretty nice balance, and 153 on the spine thickness, again, strikes a pretty nice balance. Um, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and talk about this blade a little bit. So we have here a five and a half inch blade with a drop point, a 
flat grind that you can see is not a full flat grind. You've got a nice bit of flat portion here. Uh, fairly, as I said, thin behind the edge, decent angle on this for cutting. I haven't changed the factory angle. If I'm going to do that, I always wait till after I review a knife and then I'll do a follow-up or something and talk about it. But in a review, I always make sure that I'm still dealing with the factory edge or at least the factory angle. I may have sharpened it a couple times. Uh, so, um, in terms of how this guy performs, it's D2 steel. It is coated. Now, D2 is not super stainless, but with that coating on there, it's going to work just fine. In fact, I, I really like this coating. It seems a little, I don't know, a little finer and a little... I don't know if tougher is the right word, but maybe a little tougher than some of the, the budget knife coatings that I've tried. All right, and it does not seem to you know hinder slicing ability in any way so that's a big thing some of the knives that have really really gr uh, rough aggressive coatings number one they tend to wear off faster but number two they they make the knife not as applicable or not as useful for i don't know say food prep or other kind of camp chores it becomes like strictly a a survival type of knife all right so uh, let's while well, we're talking about the blade actually you know what let's let's move on from that so that's the blade description it's d2 steel five and a half inches nice and thin behind the edge let's talk about this handle for a second before i do a little bit of demonstrating here so very comfortable grippy handle nice deep choils at the top and bottom here so really good in a saber grip there's a bit of jimping on the back of the blade in a hammer grip it's just very hand filling very comfortable and very grippy now you know, I always review knives primarily as tools, but if you were in a situation where this had to serve as a weapon, you can see you've got a nice big choil on both ends. So you're gonna get really, really good retention out of this handle. And the rubber is quite comfortable. So uh, this is not a knife, by the way, for chopping, but if you did have to do a little bit of light chopping, it, it tends to mitigate the, the transfer of force pretty nicely. At least it did when I tried that for review purposes. All right, notice that the handle is exposed or the tang i'm sorry is exposed through the bottom of the handle and that way if you need to pound on anything i don't know what you're pounding on i i've rarely ever had to do that in the bush but if you happen to have a reason to pound on something uh you can do that i suppose in a defensive situation where yes this was a weapon perhaps that would be a you know less than lethal means of applying force that you could use all right so that's kind of the rundown of the the blade itself as well as the handle uh, the sheath here is going to be sort of a you know a reinforced plastic sheath and the sheath works really well good retention it's not hold on let's see if i can do this you can see it clips in there pretty nicely it's not rattling around at all so that i really really like i'm not as stoked about this uh, you know you've got to put it on a belt I like to see some other options available there. The other thing is they give you tons and tons of room on here for attaching this in all kinds of different ways. However, the, 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 hand, the, the securement method, okay, the way you're going to attach this to your belt really doesn't lend itself to that. So this is only going to be good really for belt carry. Uh, if you want to start using all these and do like a scout carry or, you know, kidney carry or something like that, you would have to, I would say, go and find another way of securing the knife. All right. So I do like this sheath quite a bit. I know it's not Kydex, but I'm, you know, I mean, it works fine even though it's not Kydex. All right, let's get this out and do just a little bit of cutting and then we'll get to some comparisons. So if you are going to baton with a knife, I'm not a fan of batoning with a knife, but I don't mind doing smaller stuff like this. And I'll just... You know, if I can't hit it with the palm of my hand and do what I need to do, then I feel like I'm, I need to get a different tool, okay? So um, that's, that's, that's my feelings on it. I know there'll be some of you in the comments who strongly disagree with that. You can see that with that nice thin edge, you can do some carving and whittling type of stuff here pretty comfortably. And if you wanted to make feather sticks, you could definitely achieve that very well with this knife. You can see just a little bit of it developing there. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy and you know skin out this whole thing, but you can see that it's thin enough behind the edge that it can get some slicing work done pretty nicely while still being thick enough and tough enough with that flat grind that if you wanna do something a little tougher, you know, maybe you're gonna cut in and break that out like this. That's a pretty common technique. And with this knife, I'm pretty happy or pretty confident that I'm not gonna have any problems with that edge, okay? So, uh, just a little bit of cutting there. 
Okay, moving on with some comparisons. And that is always a fun part of this. I know it's something you guys really, really like. Let me first say that this knife holds its own very, very well in terms of what else is out there. Uh, this is a great option for a fixed blade for outdoor use especially. There may be a smaller one that could actually perhaps do you know, I feel like an EDC type of roll. This isn't an EDC roll. This is more of an outdoor use knife. And I think in that capacity, it's going to be really, really nice. The, the thing that I especially like about this knife is its versatility. That's what I go for, guys. That's what really attracts me. I don't want to carry 16 different knives. And now the sun's coming out. You guys are going to be able to see my shadow. Uh, I don't know what it means if a YouTube reviewer sees their shadow. There's six more weeks of something. Uh, anyway, uh, I like the versatility of this. It can serve really well, you know, making a fire, processing wood, but it can also then, you know, once you've got your fire going, you can cut up whatever you're going to cook on that fire and, and not have to go and find a paring knife or something else, okay? Now, the trade-off is if you're going to do some heavy wood processing, yes, you are going to need to bring a hatchet or a saw or something along those lines. Uh, that, however, is the way that I like to do it. So for me, that just, you know, if I'm going out to the bush, even with the kids to start a fire or something, I'm going to throw a hatchet and a folding saw in my bag. All right, so let's go on and do some comparisons. First off, I'll try to pull in here a couple of knives that are at a similar price point. And I have to tell you, I tried to not hit the camera, but I'm definitely going to hit it a few times. So if you want something bigger and heavier, of course, there is the 300 version of this, which is going to be more like the Charade SCHF 52. Uh, this, that's more where this is competing. This is, you know, kind of a heavy duty chopping style knife, not exactly designed for finer tasks, although it will kind of do those things. All right, to me, this is a little overkill. I don't carry this very often for the bush. I do bring it out here often because, or I do bring it out for videos often because of the price point. Okay, very, very attractive price point on the charade. And this one does come with a sharpener and I think I've got, hold on. So yeah, this comes with a sharpener and a ferro rod and uh, that's a nice touch. I guess if you're really thinking you might be in a survival situation, you, you may be attracted to this option. And the price point, again, is gonna be similar to the Steel Will, although it's gonna compete more directly with the larger variant of, there we go, larger variant uh, of this Romer. Okay, what else have we got here? Okay. Here's another fairly comparable knife. Now this one of course has a different clip set up and I would be really inclined to take this clip and put it on this sheath. It would be a little bit of a chore to figure out how to get it to fit, but I love the fact that this clip can be rotated to various positions depending on how you wanna carry the knife. All right, get this guy out. This is a rake knife. It is the F118 in 14C28 and blade steel. And this is a fantastic little EDC fixed blade. Really, really nice. And of course, similar price point. Now you can see you don't have quite the size, but honestly, the difference between these two in terms of what you can do is very, very little, right? I suppose if you were trying to cut, I don't know, a a watermelon, you'd probably want this one. <laughs> if it was just a grapefruit, maybe this guy would do the trick for you, okay? Uh, but again, similar price point, slight, slightly different in terms of, what would I say here? In, in terms of design philosophy, this is maybe a little more of a, a self-defense or, or de this is this leans toward the, the weapon side of a knife where this leans toward the outdoor tool slash utility side of a knife. Let's pull the rake out of here and we'll switch it out for another knife that I really, really like as an outdoor fixed blade. This is the Manly Patriot. And this is a fantastic little utility knife. I carry this one a lot. I feel like once again, it does almost everything a larger knife will do. Nice slim edge. It's, it's almost like a fixed blade para too. Like it's just a great, utility knife and I love it even if you're around the house you know cutting up fruit for the kids or something I'll use this knife because it's fantastic for that it's going to be thinner behind the edge than this which is kind of giving away a different philosophy okay so if you're going to use this knife you're looking more for something slicey and this is gonna this will slice but it's not going to be as slicey as this I'll, however 
it's going to be tougher. So that's the kind of trade-off. Both of these are in D2 steel, so in terms of edge retention and stainlessness, they're going to be pretty similar. Now again, the coating on the steel wheel is going to help it work out a little better to, uh, to not go and rust up on you. I do have a couple of more expensive knives that I want to share with you. First off would be the Topps Idaho Hunter. This is a, again, a favorite outdoor fixed blade for me. I just love the feel in hand. I really like this Kydex sheath and how, here's what I especially love. This clip can just pop on my pant leg or my waistband or whatever. I don't need to be wearing a belt to clip this on and off. And I really, really like that. That is not something you find frequently. And I kind of wish you, there were more options like this. All right, now let me point out here that the tops is going to be quite a bit more expensive. Okay, we're looking at, I don't know, 150 bucks or something like that on the Idaho Hunter where this guy's going for like 60 bucks. All right, that's a big difference and that's absolutely something you have to consider very carefully. Finally, um, and again, there's a little bit less there's a little bit less blade length here, but you can get most things done that you need to do. And this is gonna be a little more robust in terms of its construction. We've got thicker blade stock back there. Uh, very comfortable handle. Every time I get this knife in hand, I'm reminded again of how comfortable it is. I really, really think a lot of this knife, even though it looks really, really weird. Okay, let's go on to the last contender. This is a very, very popular knife, one that you guys have asked me to get on the channel more than once. Here we have a knife that probably needs no introduction. This is the Cold Steel Master Hunter. Again, quite a bit of a difference in price. I think these go for like 119. Now let me say, if you're looking to spend 100 bucks on a knife, this is where you want to go as far as I'm concerned. It's just super versatile. 3V steel is going to be very, very tough. A fantastic outdoor cutting tool. Really, really excellent. Again, you're quite a bit more in price point. Now, if you do want something closer to this size, there is a variant, again, of the Romer series that's going to be more closer. That's go Wow. I'm <laughs> uh, that's going to be closer in size to the Master Hunter. Again, I'm going to argue that this long, shorter blade can do virtually everything that I would want to do with the longer blade, except for, I don't know, as I say, cut a, a watermelon in half. All right, so those are some comparisons for you, both competitive and not so competitive options. And so what are my overall thoughts on this knife? Let me get the sheath out of the way and bring this guy in for a little bit of a close up for this last little part of the discussion here. Guys, I think this is a really, really nice knife. Uh, very well priced, okay? The budget is not gonna be overly or unduly stressed to afford this guy. And this is, the other thing that's nice about this particular version, this is the 305, as you can see there on the blade. The nice thing about this particular version is it can do a ton. So it's extremely versatile, meaning, you know, buy this and that's it. Right? In addition to this, I would buy a folding saw and a hatchet, and then you're done. You don't need like a small paring knife, plus a large chopper, plus, a, you know, this is going to do all your knife stuff, and then you've got a, a saw and a hatchet for the heavier wood processing work. So uh, that, that I think is really, really nice about this. And again, I like versatility. I know some of you watching are going to say, Kevin, you need a big heavy chopper, or, you know, I want that one knife survival knife option. And I think this can fill that role. It's big enough and strong enough that it can, you could take it to, you know, into a role that it's not necessarily designed for. The other thing, of course, is if, if you're a soldier, if you're special forces or something like that, and you need a defensive fixed blade, I still think this is a great option. You've got tons of reach, you've got tons of edge, really tough blade, and the handle here is extremely good in terms of blade retention and overall comfort. So, I, you know, guys, I think this is a real win from Steel Will. It's definitely on my short list of, you know, budget, fixed blades that I would recommend if you're if you're a hunter, if you're a camper, if you're a hiker, something like that. I think this is going to fit all of those roles really, really well. All right, don't forget to check out those links down in the description box. Don't forget to like and subscribe. A huge thank you for watching and bearing with me while I spend a little time out here in the bush. We'll talk to you soon.